converts to Judaism. May we further explain that the Ashkenazi Jews from Eastern Europe were converts to Judaism. This was during the invasion of the Greeks and the Romans in Israel. Unknown percentage of Ashkenazi Jews have been mixing with Edom bloodlines. Therefore, it is correct to say that the Ashkenazi Jews are both Gentiles and Edomites. They are both Negroes for mixing with Edom and Gentiles from their original antiquity and homeland of Ashkenaz the first son of Gomer who was the son of Japheth. On the other hand it is again not correct to call all the Ashkenazim Negro Hebrews of Edom stock. The Sephardim Jews were also converts that mixed with Negroes from the genealogy of Edom and a very small percentage are true Israelites. Europeans and Negroes had a mixture to create the kinkly hair illusion. Many Ashkenazi and Sephardi Jews are Gentile converts in our modern days. The origin of the Ashkenazi is Khazaria near the Caspian Sea and the Sephardi came from Yemen. In Yemen the whole kingdom was converted to Judaism in the ancient times. When Edomites, Asal, were converted to Judaism, they took key places and then killed many Hebrews and overtook the temple rule. The book of Psalms 83 to 4 minus 8 can give a picture of what was their motive for taking such an action. They had mixed marriage with the Romans and started to rule over the Hebrews instead. This came as a future prophecy fulfilled in the second temple during Herod's time. Herod was an Edomite hybrid. Asau had also a mixture with Ishmael through through Mathala, the daughter of Ishmael Abraham's son, the sister of Nebajit, to be his wife in addition to the Canaanite wives he had. The Arabs and Egyptian became mixed and are to this day. Remember that polygamy was and is part of real Hebrew culture which we can even see among African tribes today. The Caucasian Jews do not practice polygamy because they are not true Israelites but Gentile converts from Khazaria in Russia. The lifestyle of Hebrews is patriarchal marriage and monogamy was considered of Satan. God's warning to impostors, there is Revelation chapter 2 verse 9 and 3 to 9. A clear-cut picture has finally been revealed to us all on the true origin of the Hebrews, Israelites of the Bible. We now know who they are, where they are, and what color they are. Therefore, God through his servant John, who was at Patmos Island when his eyes were made blind by evil workers, but Jesus Christ made him to see with spiritual eyes and he saw people pretending to be Jews and are not. God calls these people first blasphemous to deny a. These lairs calls themselves Jews when inside their hearts know that they are not Jews but impostors. Time is now to repent from this evil action. Second, synagogue of Satan, God wants each and every person to be the temple of the Holy Spirit after receiving Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. This can make an individual not to be a synagogue of Satan, where cheating, impostors and all evil is part of their lives. Lairs and impostors will not inherit the kingdom of God. Chapter 3 to 9 God has made a promise to expose all pretenders. Time is coming and that time is now when he will expose all the impostors and he will make them kneel before the true Hebrews, Israelites, to show that God has loved Israel. Malachi chapter 1 verses 1 to 2. What color are the Hebrews? Further discussion to prove the true color. We have been made to believe that the Hebrews and Egyptians of the Bible were white people when in fact they were black. Film industries took a center stage of infusing in the mind of people by continuing showing movies about white people as the real Hebrews of the Bible. This message has actually gone deep in the minds of people who can even call this view as blasphemy to associate Jesus to black race. 
Today, if you are told to testify on the dream you had last night about Jesus Christ in a vision, your explanation about Jesus might even match with the exactly picture of an American Jesus you watched on TV. I'm told that people who know the main actor go to an extent of desiring to worship that person. He has been telling them that he was just acting and he is not the real Jesus. It is fiction movies. Exclamation mark. Exclamation mark. We the people of the world should not let this occur because the ones to be affected by this will be the children of their future. One person would ask, does it matter if Hebrews wear white or black? The answer is yes. Because we are living in the world of lies and deception. And when the children's minds develop off the deception that this being taught and taught, then the truth must be brought to the forefront. Black people are more vulnerable to deception especially when their history has been erased from their minds through their education system, TV and movie theaters. Therefore time has come for the truth to be told. Whites did not share all the details about black people's history when they were in charge of all printing media. This was because of racial faith they had towards black people. Today the world has developed and we all have access to information through different media and no person can be deceived. We shall go back to the book of Genesis and we shall look at the people of the Bible on who and who. Which country do they belong to in this present days? Genesis chapter 10 v 2 to 4. Let's begin together please. Japheth and his sons. Japheth begot Goma, Galatians, Germans, Crinia, Cambria, Celts, Magog, Scythians, Georgia, Madai, Mede, Javan, Had, Grecians, Tubal, Ibers, Mishak, Moscow, Tiruz. The sons of Goma, Askenaz, Regenians, Germany, Saxon, Scandavia, Rifad, Togermath. The sons of Javan are Elisha, Tarshishi, Kitim, Cyprus. A historian by the name of Abraham Ibn Ezra said the Romans were descendants of Kitim. Let us look at Genesis chapter 10 v 6 to 18. Ham and his sons. Ham begot Cush, Ethiopia, Mizraim, Egypt, Put, Libya, and Canaan. The sons of Cush. Nimrod, Seba, Havila, Sabatha, Rama, and Subtaka. The sons of Rama are Sheba and Dedan. The sons of Mizraim. Ludum, Anaman, Lahabim, Naphtahim, Pathrasim, Kaslahim, and Kaphtorim. The sons of Canaan are Sidon, Heth, Jubasites, Amorites, Gergesites, Hivites, Arkites, Sinites, Arvadites, Zemorites, and Hamathite. Genesis chapter 10 v 22 to 29 should be compared to Luke chapter 3 v 35 because Cain and Arcanan is missing in the book of Genesis. He was removed by Masoretes as earlier stated in the other paragraph. Shem and his sons, Elam, Ashor, Arphax, Chaldeans, Lud and Aram. The sons of Aram, Uz, Hul, Gether and Mash. Sons of Arphax, note the omission. The first son was Kainan and not Shalah. This is the correct order according to Luke. Arphax begot Kainan, Canaan. Kainan begot Shalah. Kilah begot Eber. Eber begot Peleg. Here comes the family of Abraham and Joktan. Joktan begot Elmodid, Shelef, Azarmavith. Jera, Adoram, Uzal, Dikla, Obal, Abimael, Sheba, Orphir, Havila, and Jobab. Noah is the father of all the three sons Japheth, Ham, and Shem. But after the dispersion of the people by God at the Tower of Babel, each went in their own region of the world. Japheth and his family went into Europe. However, Shemay and Ham stayed in the area and this is the reason why intermarriages occurred between the two people. They occupied the same land mass. Mizraim, Egypt, and some of his family went into a land called Africa, but it wasn't called Africa then. 
The name Africa came from a Greek word Phryk means cold and horo and Afric means not the land of cold and horo. The land of Ham is hot, Latin Africa means sunny. Kosh Ethiopia, the brother to Mizraim had a very large area which even went into what is now called the Middle East. Remember Nimrod was a Cushitic and the beginning of his kingdom was Babel, Uruk, Akkad and Kalna in the land of Shinar. This land area is almost the same as Persian Kingdom. The only difference is that the Persian Kingdom included India, Esther chapter 1 v 1. But Cush and his kingdom started from Babel present day Iraq. We must have this picture in mind to understand the connection of Africa and Middle East, that it was one land mass. Around 1913 BC, Abraham and his wife Sarah went to Egypt because of the famine which was in the land. Please follow carefully with the next quotation. But before he entered the land of Egypt he said, Behold now, I know that you are a fair woman to look upon. And it will come to pass, when Egyptians shall see thee that they will say, This is his wife, and they will kill me, but thee they will keep alive. Now let us look at one commentary's references by Rabbi S-H-E-L-O-M-O-H-Y-I-T-S-C-H-A-K-I, Solomon ben Isaac, also known as Rashi, said the following in his commentary in relation to the above quotation. Behold now, I know that thou art a fair woman, underscore, knowing that you are beautiful, I realize that your beauty is now a source of danger, particularly since the Egyptian are dark-skinned and ugly. Despite this comment having some racial discrimination and ridiculous comment, but the point here is the fact that the rabbi has stated that the Egyptians were black people, having a black-skinned race and a person belonging to a dark-skinned race. The all issue may look irrelevant now, but this quote by Rashi is going to backfire on him. Let us now follow the explanation because Rashi has admitted that the Egyptians were black people. Next story is about Joseph, one of the twelve sons of Jacob, was sold to Egypt by his own brothers out of anger. The Ishmaelites took Joseph and sold to the Egyptians. Later a famine had struck the land of Egypt and Canaan according to the Bible. In case there are those WHO don't know the verses in the Bible that talks of black people, here we are and we have already started bringing out those verses to you. Because of hunger in the land Jacob instructed several of his sons to go into Egypt and buy food because Egypt had enough to sell. When the brothers of Joseph the sons of Jacob had entered the land of Egypt they were told to see a particular person. They didn't know the person they were going to see and when they faced him, they did not recognize him, but Joseph recognized them. Now if Joseph is supposed to be a white person and he was in the midst of black people, don't you think his brothers would have recognized him immediately? Could it have been due to him being black amongst black people and blended in? A white person definitely would have been able to be pointed at if he was amongst black slaves during slavery time. What do you think? Next it is a story when Israelites were leaving in the land of Egypt and Pharaoh had instructed that all males among the children of Israel to be killed. One Israeli couple had a newborn baby, a son and was hidden for three months. But when they could not hit him any more, the child was put in a basket and placed among the reeds by the bank of the Nile River. The daughter to Pharaoh wanting to bath in the Nile, went to the banks and saw the basket among the reeds and she opened the basket she saw a baby in it. Because the baby was very young she instructed a Hebrew family coincidentally the mother to the child to look after and nurse the child until he was weaned. The agreement was made and the baby was given the name Moses. Remember that the Egyptians were black, and if Moses was white and knowing Pharaoh had issued a decree to kill all the Hebrew males, 
Wouldn't he have killed Moses just there and then when she brought the child into the house of her father Pharaoh, since supposedly the child was white in the midst of black Egyptians? Again, if the child was white, do you think Pharaoh's daughter would have even allowed the child to live when she found him by the Nile River? Obviously, the answer is no. The last point is this, we all know that Moses lived among the Egyptians for years and one day he saw an Egyptian abusing a Hebrew. He came to the aid of the Hebrew and killed the Egyptians. He ran away in case the news reached Pharaoh. He left Egypt and went to the land of Median when he just entered the land of Median. He helped some women. They were very grateful and ran back to tell their father that an Egyptian helped them. Here again, if they made a mistake by saying Moses was an Egyptian and knowing that Egyptians are supposedly dark-skinned and ugly, does this also make Moses dark-skinned and ugly too? Surely people need to be careful on what they say it may come back to haunt you. Herodotus, 484-425 BC, was born in Halicarnassus, a Greek colony in Asia Minor. He traveled a lot in different regions and he was a friend to Sophocles of Greece. His journey included reaching the western shores of Black Sea, South Italy and Egypt, and to the Asian cities of Tyre, Babylon, Igbatana, Nineveh and Susa. During his journey he wrote the following quotation about the Egyptians or natives. It is certain that the natives of the country are black. There can be no doubt that the Colchians are an Egyptian race. I made this inquire on the subject both in Colchis and in Egypt and I found that the Colchians had a more distinct ray correction of the Egyptians than the Egyptians had of them. My own conjectures were found first. On the fact that they are black skinned and have woolly hair. By this quotation, it also gives us a positive identification on Egyptians. This is to show that Egyptians were black and that Israelite always got mistaken for them, to also prove that they both, the Egyptians and the Israelites, were black people. Solomon Grazel, a white Jewish historian of the 9th century CE AD, he stated that a man appeared in North Africa among the Hebrews there. His name was Eldad from the tribe of Dan, Danite. They said he spoke a very strange and unknown language and he told them weird stories. He said the members of his tribe had escaped Israel after Sennacherib had conquered Israel and he mentioned of Hebrews from other tribes who lived where he came from. He taught the other Hebrews in North Africa all the laws that people follow, which was given to his tribe by tradition from Moses' successor Joshua ben Nun. The story was examined to be true and legitimate by the gown. This story has been included here because Mr. Grazel went on to say, Some modern scholars argue that Eldad was an Ethiopian Jew, a descendant of ancient colony, which in the days of Ezra, lived on the south border of Egypt, we all know the color of the Ethiopian Jews and we can conclude that Eldad the Danite, from the tribe of Dan, one of the twelve tribes of Israel, was a black man. Dear friends, fathers, mothers, uncles and all brothers and sisters, if we can't believe and accept this proof as to say what color the Hebrews wear, then you are truly in the state of denial. Finally on this topic, we are going to list other verses in the Bible identifying the color of the Israelites. The verses are as follows, Lamentation 4 v 8 it say their visage, face, is blacker than coal. Lamentation 5 v 10 our skin was black like an oven. Job 30 v 30 my skin is black upon me, Song of Solomon 1 v 5 to 6 I am dark but lovely. Do not look upon me because I am black. Daniel 7 v 9 And the hair of his head was like pure wool. Daniel 10 v 6 His arms and feet like burnished bronze in color. Revelation chapter 1 v 14 His head and hair were white like wool.
his feet like brass as if refined in the furnace. Acts chapter 21 verses 37 to 39, Are you not the Egyptian who some time ago stirred up a rebellion? Joseph, Moses, and Paul were mistaken to be Egyptians because they were black. They blended together with black Egyptians in color and appearance. We can also know the color of Hebrews on differentiating between white people and lepers by reading Leviticus chapter 13. The color of real Hebrews is found in this passage. Please go on and read King James Version, KJV. Prophesy on Israelites of Africa. Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 10. Israelites tribesmen have been situated in the heart of Africa for a long time in history. Ethiopia is mentioned from the beginning of the Bible of Genesis and we cannot say there were no Israelites living there. From Ethiopia, Egypt, Libya and Sudan they migrated to west and south into the heart of Africa. This includes the whole central and southern Africa. Some passing through the Nilotic Corridor in East Africa reached as far as South Africa. We should remember that the Nilotic people are called nomads because they don't stay at one place because of pasture for grazing animals and farming. Others passed through the Niger Congo to West Africa. They were also running away from persecution. Prophet Zephaniah said that time is coming when God will remember his worshippers, the daughters of his dispersed ones from beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. These dispersed Israelites shall offer an offering to God and they will no longer be ashamed for any of their deeds in which they transgressed against God. If we read verse 20 God says that after he brings these Hebrews back, he will give them fame and praise among all the people of the earth. When I return your captives before your eyes, says the Lord.